Hey guys, what's going on and uh, welcome to another vlog. As you can probably tell by looking at the resolution options on today's video, um, I'm shooting today's vlog in 8K, which I know is overkill, but uh, we're going to talk about it here in a second. Um, I just stepped in some mud from the puddle back there, so kind of sucks, but I mean, luckily these shoes are waterproof, so I can just spray it with a hose and it should be okay. But this vlog right here is going to be a very good test to see um, how long I can shoot in 8K before it overheats, basically. Um, when I'm recording right now, it looks like I could get 15 minutes. Um, that's what it told me I could record, so we'll have to see if we get anywhere near that. But I doubt it. Today's video is going to be kind of like short and sweet, hopefully. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of spontaneously doing this, so bear with me. But um, the area that we're walking in is actually at the park where I shot the last few videos. And um, on the back side, where I, I shot the video about the river that was over there, um, and the guy was throwing the frisbee. If you guys haven't seen that video, go ahead and check that out. But the back side of that river is this area right here, and he was actually throwing the frisbee right over there. So if we're going to go over there, and uh, there's a place to sit down the camera if I remember right, but it has been, you know, quite a, quite a long time since I've been here, so on this side of the park at least. But um, as far as uh, the camera is concerned, um, I'm finding that the warping effect on the edges, when I use the wide angle here, it's definitely there. Um, so I might start shooting my vlogs without stabilization on, and then if I ever like want to shoot something cinematic, then I'll, I'll throw the stabilization on for that. But looks like I found the spot that I want to put the camera at. Um, and hopefully my exposure and everything's okay. I kind of changed my settings a little bit, so bear with me here. I'm going to put the camera down. All right. So hopefully you guys are liking this, this style that I'm doing with uh, kind of shooting raw because I feel like it really, um, I don't know, it just kind of like, it brings you guys closer to me and my life and, and how genuine I am with everything and, and the content that I make. And um, it makes it relatable, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, um, now this lighting situation is probably not ideal because I've only got a little bit of uh, an entry of sunlight through the trees up above me here. So, but... It's in direct sunlight, the camera is, so this will be a great test to see how long it lasts. So if any time during this recording I, you know, have to come back and then continue talking about what I was talking about, if there's like all of a sudden like a cut in the video, then that's why. So, um, but this is a great test for the 8K video quality. So if, if those of you guys are, are out there, you know, you, like you're wondering like, okay, I want to shoot 8K or I want to shoot like super crisp 4K, um, this camera is great for that. Um, so hopefully you can really tell from this example here. Um, I know that I'm probably not explaining it as well, but hopefully you guys get my point on what I'm trying to convey. Um, but basically uh, the quality is insane on this camera. This is the Canon R5, by the way. Um, I have a 15 to 35 millimeter, um, I believe it's an f2.8. Um, it's a zoom lens, and I've heard from all the reviews that it's one of the sharpest lenses out there right now as far as a zoom lens is concerned. Um, so hopefully you guys can kind of tell. Um, what's nice about the 8K is that it still has all the auto func function. Ah, ah, see, I'm already messing up. Autofocus options is what I meant to say. It has all the autofocus options that it has in the other modes too. Um, so for instance, if I put my hand up here, it should focus. All right, so it did. I actually didn't do any real world testing on this. I just, I remember in 4K it works just fine. So it looks like it's doing the same here. And if you can tell, even in the 8K modes, if I get close like that, it still focuses on me. And it's got um, eye autofocus and face autofocus on right now at the same time. Um, so what's nice about that, and I know this is kind of getting off topic from the 8K, but it's nice to test this as well is that if I back further away, it should auto focus on everything around me, you know, so it's focused on the trees and how far I am. But if I come up close, 
you should see that it focuses pretty nicely. So I'm very, very pleased with this camera. You know, like I've had uh, Canon 80D in the past and it was nothing like this as far as like how quick the autofocus is, how smooth it is. And there's various settings on this camera that I can use for that. So it's pretty nice. Um, in my own opinion, and I know a lot of people, they strictly are Sony or Panasonic, but for me, I really like Canon. Like once I started with the Canon camera, I never went back. So, but as far as the 8K is concerned, you should be able to see the quality and everything. So as far as my hands, you can see the, um, the details in that. My jacket, you can see the details in that. Um, as far as my sunglasses, you should be able to really see that. So, I don't know, like every once in a while I'm going to use the 8K option, but I don't really have a, a like a main use case for it unless I'm shooting something that's like cinematic or like documentary pretty much because as far as an interview is concerned, like if I'm interviewing someone else, um, I probably won't use 8K. Um, it's a little bit overkill for that. I'll probably use just normal 4K or 4K HQ, which is basically down sampled 8K, um, which still looks amazing from the examples I've seen. I haven't done testing on it myself, but from the image you guys are seeing right now, you can bet that it's gonna be a really sharp image. So I'm very pleased with this camera. It is a full frame sensor. So it's my first full frame camera, um, you know, my first full frame sensor on a DSLR camera ever. So um, it's pretty exciting, you know, like I, I, I wanted this for a long time, but it takes a while to, to save up the money to actually afford something like this. So I understand if, if you guys can't afford this setup exactly, you know, there are other great options out there. Um, but for me and the, my workflow and like what works best for me, this camera does the job just fine. Um, so my point in this entire video, I know I've been kind of rambling off and on, but the point in this entire video is this is what 8K looks like. It should look pretty nice. Um, and I don't know how my computer is going to handle it because my computer, it can handle 4K pretty well, but 8K is quite a lot for like most cameras or sorry, most computers. Um, it, it's a lot on the processor and I don't know, we'll just have to see when I get around to it. Um, I don't really dabble around with proxies that much. Um, I've heard that it's a great idea for editing videos that are high resolution to create a proxy of a lower resolution. So you can basically, you can go through and you can edit in the low resolution, but when you come to render, it's gonna render in the high res. Um, so basically I haven't really done a whole lot of that. So I'll have to experiment a little bit more, find out what, what works best for me, because I'm pretty sure that my camera, or there I go again, my computer, I'm pretty sure my computer um, will not be able to just play back this video as is. Um, I'm not even sure which codec it's running in right now. I don't think I have it in, I'm pretty sure I'm not shooting an 8K RAW, so I think it's H.265, I want to say. Um, now H.265 is a newer codec. Um, I'm not exactly sure when it was released, but um, with that, you know, editing high resolution files in general, you'll need a pretty good beefy computer for that. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens at the end of this video here when I am done shooting and have to bring it into the editing software. So um, with all that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, it does mean the world to me that you guys stick around, you watch the videos, and hopefully you found this a little bit informative, a little bit helpful um, as far as judging what the quality will look like if you decide to purchase this camera. Um, now, I can't say the same for any other 8K camera out there um, or 4K capable camera because um, this is the only camera I have, so I can't really do any testing on that. So um, this is what it looks like on the Canon R5. Um, I would highly recommend this camera. You know, it came out, I believe, last year um, at the time of this recording. And um, yeah, you know, it's, overall, I'm very pleased with it. You know, great camera and uh, great quality for that. Um, like I said, I don't know if I'll ever use 8K again, um, at least for the meantime. But um, 4K videos are going to be a very common thing on my channel. Um, so if you're new to the channel, you have not subscribed yet, definitely go ahead and do that. Uh, red subscribe button down below, make sure you hit the bell as well. That way you get notified every time I post. Um, basically on this channel, I'm going to be doing a lot of filmmaking and photography related videos, but occasionally I'll do like a gaming video here and there um, where I'm playing like Call of Duty or, you know, something else. Um, we'll have to see on that. But uh, 
anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to end the vlog here. Um, this is my first 8K vlog, by the way, like ever. Um, I shot a little short cinematic clip, which I believe is on this channel, where I shot this castle, but I was using the Galaxy S21 Ultra, um, my cell phone, for that. So it, it looks way different, honestly, if you compare the two side by side, 8K versus 8K. Um, big sensor size difference. So um, with all that being said, guys, I'll see you in the next video.